Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. Today, I'm excited. We have Jim Simon. He's co-founder of Jimmy Bar with sister Annette. This is his sixth startup. He decided to tackle the food and obesity problem by creating a natural foods company. They only use wholesome ingredients that are gluten-free, dairy-free, that people can actually pronounce. Jimmy Bars can be found in Whole Foods, Walgreens, Target, Kroger's, and many, many more. Jim, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So why not call it Net Bars? <laughs> oh, my sister? Yeah. Uh, well, the name is actually, uh, I actually, originally I hated the name. So uh, when, uh, it's a funny story. I'll give you a, a brief uh, yeah. bit of like, Go as long as you so, like, yeah. I was in technology. I was doing business development and M&A in technology. My sister owned a restaurant um, in Chicago called Filippo's. I've been there. Which, uh, yeah. Oh, you've been there? Really? Yeah, okay. for yeah. sure. Great, great, great Italian restaurant right in the center of town. She'd been doing it for 22, 23 years, getting wow. a, you know, a little – it's an exhausting business. Um, and so I, uh, I started you know, traveling back and forth from New York to Silicon Valley and – um, and started eating bars because bars are a great meal replacement. And then had the, the you know, one day it was reading. I was actually on an American Airlines flight. I'm reading the, the ingredients on one of the bars. I'm like, Jesus, this is this is total crap. <laughs> it's just it's maldextrin. I mean, a lot, any words with the, unpronounceable. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, any any ingredient with the X in it is probably not so healthy. So, um, started googling the ingredients, and I'm like, oh my god, this is so bad. Um, and then you know, started on Netflix watching way too many movies. Yeah, and, I saw um, you watch Food Inc. Yeah. That scares uh, the bejesus out of most people. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's interesting because you don't really think about it. It, you know, Americans are very cliff notes. We're sort of cliff notes eaters, and we'll read, you know, whatever is belched out by the big food company. We'll read uh, low fat. We'll go great. I'll eat my snack wells, and uh, even though it's loaded with sugar or. Yeah. High protein will be great, and we'll eat whatever, and it's high protein, but it's made of ingredients that aren't healthy for us. Yeah. So I just started making my own bars. You did? Um, just for fun. Yeah, just for fun. Just what, in were, the, what were the I, original ones? What did you put in The original ones were awful. Uh, it was, I would put like dates and raisins, and I'm not – like I wasn't that healthy. So I'm not a vegan. Don't get me wrong. But uh, just I'm a Cliff Notes healthy guy too. So – um, started making bars and then my sister's like, Oh my God, these are awful. You know, she's like, why don't you add brown sugar and add this? And I'm like, no, 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 that's not the idea. I'm just trying to make them healthy. This is before I even marketed them. Right. So I would make these bars, I'd wrap them up in tinfoil and I'd bring them back to Silicon Valley to all my friends who are reasonably healthy people. And they started saying these are kind of good. So I, I sent out an email blast to all my friends and, and including my little nieces and nephews and I said, I'm going to brand this thing just for fun. I'm not a business, but just for fun. What should I name it? And my little eight-year-old niece said, why don't you call the Uncle Dummy Bar? Because she calls me Uncle Dummy. <laughs> and I'm like, that's actually kind of funny. But I would be sort of embarrassed to say, I, you know, this is the Uncle Dummy Bar. She said, we call it the Uncle Jimmy Bar. And I'm like, nah, that's a little embarrassing. So she said, call it the Jimmy Bar. Ironically, I don't like the name Jimmy. I go by Jim. But um, so like everybody's like, that's catchy. It's very American. Let's do it. Right. And Nettie, my sister, who's a chef and restaurateur, she said, let me just give them out for free. We'll put them in like halfway decent wrappers and we'll just give them out to everybody who comes in the restaurant. You know, we, we had our nieces like stickering them. We'd heat seal it in this heat seal gun. We got, you know, you were doing for them by hand bucks. at that point. We we're doing it by hand, yeah. yeah. In, in the basement of the restaurant, Filippo's. Wow. Like literally doing them by hand. You know, again, just for fun and just, you know, it's a little side business. Yeah. Um, everybody at the restaurant liked them. And then she's like, why don't we go pitch Sunsets and Treasure Island and like all the local guys? And I said, like, okay. Now, we're, this is right around the, when the company I was with got acquired. And so I was a free agent. I'm like, okay, I'll focus on this. I was pitching another one of my friends, uh, Jason Wather, who's the founder of um, uh, Leapfrog Online, which is a big internet company in yeah, Chicago. Yeah. And I was pitching him, in on an, in, pitching him on an internet idea. And he's like, I kind of like your Jimmy Bar thing better. <laughs> He's, he's like, food is very on trend. I'm like, I don't know anything about the food industry. He's like, why don't we put a couple bucks in this? I get some friends. We'll all put a couple bucks in this. We'll make this thing real. And that's kind of how it happened. So wow. we started with bars. Bars are a really crowded category. There's plenty of them out there. Most of them are crap. Um, and so we said our mandate must be these things are clean. Um, and we're not going to get away from that. It's going to be clean. Yeah. Um, I was against adding protein. I was against a lot of stuff. Um, however... 
after we got into about 500 stores, then we got into Whole Foods. We started local with grocery because that's what we knew. And I, the first place we got them into was uh, a little grocery store right on Grand uh, in Erie, right where I used to live. And he liked them. And then, that was the first uh, one, the first one you ever, grocery store you were ever in. Yeah, it was the first what's one. The pitch, got, what's the pitch for that? Is that hard to get in there or no? It was literally... You know, I would go in there for my coffee every morning. I got to know the owner, who's a really great guy. Uh, I told him, I said, hey, I got this bar. He said, okay, bring it in. And so I brought it in. He tasted it. And he goes, okay, well, let's do it. That was it. It was literally that easy. Now, that's not reality because it's a lot harder than that once you get into, like, Target and stuff. But right. that's literally what it was. Yeah. Uh, we got in there. So we started doing demos. We hired a little demo team. And demos are, you give samples, that free sample. You know, when you walk into Whole Foods and they for say, sure. try this roll or whatever. We did it. People loved them, which is great, but a lot of people are saying, we want higher protein, we want lower sugar. And I kept explaining to people, like, the sugar's from dates and apples and bananas. Right. Um, and they said, oh, sugar, sugar. It doesn't matter. The sugar in my Hershey bar is the same as the sugar in your apple. I'm like, interesting. So then we realized we got to educate people a little bit. I didn't even think about it. We're like, people don't right. understand. And then I realized, but food is like politics where even smart people are really dumb um, about the, the information they receive where you can have, you know, you can have a, a union plumber who's, uh, who votes Republican because he thinks that that's good for him, even though, you know, Republicans in that area might be union busters. Or you can have, you know, someone who eats uh, a certain way because they think it's healthy, when in reality it's horrible for right, them. For sure. So, you know, it, was, it was very interesting. Again, it sort of reminded me of technology where there's a lot of education. and um, So that's the way we rolled. And then a as we started digging into it, I self-funded. I put some of my own money into it. Um, Annette came on board full time. She sold a restaurant. Um, Filippo, her husband, who's also a chef, came on full board. So it was wow. just three people. Um, then hired a sales rep and kind of felt our way through it. I frankly didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, but being a veteran of startups, you know, you just fake it till you make it, they say in Hollywood. <laughs> so we just sort of kept going with it. Then what I realized is, wow, dealing with grocery chains is really challenging because a lot of them want what's called slotting, which is free stuff. They want free, you know, yep, we'll buy a case uh, product, we, but we want a case for free. Or, yeah, you can be in, you know, I'm just making this up, Dominic's, it can be 10,000 bucks. It's sort of what, like in the radio industry, is called payola. So, um, <laughs> and it's very common and it's not dirty. It's just the way it is. So, you know, to get into some of these chains, they want ten, fifteen, twenty-five thousand dollars. One of the chains I went to on the East Coast, they wanted thirty thousand dollars for us just to have our four bars there. And so, my first reaction is like, wow. That's do the math on that. How many bars do you have to, to recover but, that thirty thousand? Yeah. But the interesting thing is this: yeah. is that. The food industry, that's kind of the norm, where people will pay because they think there's a prestige of being in a certain chain. Yeah. You know, again, coming at this with different eyes, I said, uh, you know, that doesn't, that, you can't ROI. That's a, if you can't ROI, it doesn't make sense. Right. So we stayed away from it. While we're staying away from a lot of the big chains, I started getting into food service. Uh, food service is non-grocery, which is... Yeah, like I saw American Airlines that you're in and like those type of things, right? That's a funny story. I was in a Admiral's Club and, you know, they had uh, nothing healthy at all or nothing even halfway healthy. They had one bar brand there um, and it, was, it wasn't healthy. Uh, and I was just talking to the guy in the Admiral's Club. I'm like, these bars are terrible, man. And he's like, I know, they suck. I said, I, here's a Jimmy bar. I said, it's a little brand I, I just started. Why don't you try it and let me know if American Airlines wants it. And he said, it's not American Airlines, it's Sodexo. Sodexo is the food service company that is man that manages, mm. you know, American or this animal club. Well, I didn't even know what that I don't even know what that meant. So I realized then that food service is outsourced, you know, kitchens and outsourced management of food, like right. they have in colleges and like they have it, you know, the light bulb went off at that point. I'm like, wow, you know, no one's calling on these guys. So I started focusing on that. So I focused on food service, getting us into places like uh, Google and Facebook and Uber um, and Allstate, Northbrook in your backyard, you know, places like that and said, hey, are you guys looking for something healthier? Uh, they said yes. So it was sort of the antithesis of a lot of the grocery chains that said, hey, go away, dude. We don't want to deal with you. You're the 87th bar guy or 87th wine company that's come pitch me. Right. Um, these guys are actually looking for it. Now, it was more of a pound the pavement kind of sale. Um, it was more 
go, you know, it's not big orders. It's not a $50,000 order. It's more smaller orders. However, you're getting to people who actually want to talk to you. Um, and it's very much a, almost like a Sam Walton approach where I'll stay in Bentendorf uh, or I'll stay in Bentonville, uh, Arkansas, and you guys fight over New York City. You know, and so we kind of went right. smaller and went yeah. smart. Again, self-funding, we had to go smaller. We didn't approach VCs for cash. Um, and then little by little, we started getting bigger. Um, ironically, we're bigger in San Francisco than we are in Chicago. Really? We're bigger in New York than we are in Chicago, and we're bigger in Toronto than we are in Chicago. Um, so, because there's just more food service there. Yeah. Once, once we got into a lot of food service, then we said, okay, let's start thinking about grocery and mass market. So we got into Target regionally. Um, they were looking, they were actually seeking healthier stuff. Um, and we started uh, getting into, we just got into GNC nationally, which is a really good deal. That's huge, yeah. Um, yeah, Walgreens regionally. A lot of the chains you start regionally, and if you perform, then you go national. So yeah. we started hitting up the non-grocery. Now we're focusing more on grocery. What made you, Jim, decide to do that? I mean, going to Target, because you know before going to those big channels was very costly. Were they, is, is it more favorable to go into Target or something like that? You know what, we we wanted to do as many deals as we could um, direct. And so without, uh, I'm just assuming I have an NDA and I probably shouldn't give de de well, deal if details. You, if you can't say, don't, don't <laughs> yeah. say. Yeah. But, but we just, we wanted to yeah. go into as many places, places if we can deal with the store direct um, and, and, and also our Amazon and our, uh, and our online strategy is, you know, selling directly to the consumer. I mean, the closest you can sell to the consumer, there's nothing closer than going on online. And we do a lot with Amazon and they've been great partners for us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, same with, you know, Target is a great partner for us because we deal directly with Target and then hence, you know, do samplings and deal directly with the consumer. That's what we want to do. We have some, uh, some really good distribution partners around the country, but you know, our strategy is we like dealing with family-owned businesses. We like dealing with regional distributors. And unlike most food companies, we want to grow small. We want to grow small, smart, profitable. Yeah. I don't want to lose my investors' money. We just did a, a, a convertible debt round here a few months ago and really strategically picked out amazing investors that I know and I trust um, who are who are going to be patient with our strategy of growing a little bit slower. Yeah. What would you say to someone who they have a uh you know, I was talking to someone the other day, they have a beef jerky company and they're deciding the ups and downs of going into like a big, you know, retail chain. Well, what advice would you give them? I would say make sure you ROI. Um, and and from, from, from the way we feel is there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing prestigious about losing money. And so, <laughs> so <laughs> you can put Walgreens, you know, emblem on your website, but yeah, in the end, the yeah. website might go down. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. like, uh, yes, would I love to be in Walgreens nationally? Damn right I would. Um, but you know, it's got to be a, a deal um, that you can make money at, and um, and it's un very unlike technology, where in technology you don't have to be cash flow positive. And in very, you know, like it took what Amazon eleven years to be cash flow positive. Stuff. It's food isn't like that. Uh, you can be negative cash flow for a few years, but you better make money at some point. Because they're all the big, uh, you know, food companies come eat your lunch. No pun intended. So right. you have to have a path to profitability. And if you can get into Walmart or you can get into Publix or you can get into Kroger's, God bless you. It's awesome. But you just make sure, have to make sure that there is a path to profitability at some point. And you're right, having the logo of Publix would look really cool on on your website. But if you if you get killed because uh, right. you priced it too low or whatever. It's not a good move. What are some things that you know you would tell other people to watch out for? Because you are in you know the Target, the Kroger, Walgreens. What what are some of the not disadvantages, but things that you definitely pay close attention to? Uh, I would pay very close attention to making sure that you can actually you know you know how entrepreneurs are you get a big order and you're like I'll take it. You got to make sure you can actually produce the product in time, um, and also have a have a healthy yeah. line of credit and have right. investors. Uh, that have money because um, uh, a buddy of mine who who uh, who ran a food company he had a great product but he just frankly ran out of cash. Yeah. So you have to make sure you're well funded. 
I personally like growing slower, um, but we didn't take VC money, so and we're not looking to sell tomorrow. So um, that was just our path. But you know, there have been enormous successes out there with companies that have you know grown really, really fast. But if they were well capitalized, they can do that. I would just say, right. very, you know, for anybody like the jerky company. Look, if, if they have the line of credit and they can get into Walmart tomorrow, go for it. Yeah. Uh, you just have to make sure there's a path to profitability. What's that order that you said yes to? That was that big order that that you knew you were going to say yes to and you couldn't say no. Uh, I actually had an order we had to turn down. I, mm -hmm. I had a retailer, um, a, a big regional retailer that we had to turn down because we just couldn't produce the product because um, we were co-packing, you know, our manufacturer couldn't keep up. So we had to turn, and I mean, who do, no one likes to turn down a PO. But the last thing you want to do is disappoint, you know, a retailer and, and not be able to produce the product. Um, I would say one other recommendation would be your product uh, has to be consistent. You know, if you go to a restaurant in mm. Highland Park and you have a negative experience, you're not going back. Right. Um, if you if someone has a bar and it doesn't taste really good, um, they're never going to try it again. So we source, I would, I would advise the jerky guys or anybody, source your own ingredients. Like yeah. take the time, go a little bit slower, be patient, source your own ingredients, make sure the ingredients are good. Yes, you want to get a really low price, but make sure it's, it's with a quality manufacturer. Right. Um, we've learned the hard way a couple times on that one. So being in the technology field for so long, was your sister helping out in that, on that front or was that a learning curve for, for everyone? It, well, it was a learning curve teaching her how to use email. You know, that, I was I was like the I, the IT guy for the first year. When she sees this, she'll kick me in the ass. Um, but uh, it was funny working with a, a sibling. I had never done it before. Yeah, what's that uh, like? Yeah, right. It's interesting. So she's more the creative type, and I was more the business guy. Um, and um, she had to teach me a lot about food. Um, and I had to teach a lot about you know, you know this kind of business, uh, but it's been literally been zero drama. I mean, we just we work very independently. She is in charge of production, she's in charge of R and D. So you know, I'll say, hey, what about a nut free bar? Because everybody's allergic to nuts now. You know, kids can't have nuts. K through twelve, you can't have peanuts. You right, can't even get crazy. nuts you can't on even bring top of the airlines anymore. Sure. I know. So we just, I said, here's what we can do. And then she'll come back yeah. knowing that she's a chef. She wants stuff to taste unbelievably amazing. That's so good thing, yeah. brown sugar and like, I'm like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> so we'll come back. There's always kind of a happy medium of like, here's what we can do. Here's what we can't do. Right. And, and here's a funny thing though. So I was the one who's more rigid about, we can do this. We can't do this. It's mm. gotta be gluten-free. And then she kept coming back and saying, we're getting people who think our bar is too high in sugar. And then you know, I would say that's stupid. You know, <laughs> sugars from apples, and she said, "Well, you're stupid because that's what the consumer thinks." And so we said, "Okay." So the trend now is high protein, low sugar, right? right. Um, and there's some bars that have done a phenomenal job. I mean, much bigger than us. The problem is, is that a lot of those high sugar or the low sugar, high protein guys are with those ingredients, uh, with a lot of ingredients with you know mono, blah blah right. blah. You know, you can't read. They're it. not the but wholesome we, like, <laughs> yeah. No, but then another thing we realized is, wow, maybe people don't care. <laughs> maybe we're like the really honest politician who can't get reelected. You know, like we're like, I don't want to be like the one honest guy and like no one tastes the bar. Like, <laughs> maybe maybe we need to maybe we need to do you know come up with a high protein bar, a low sugar bar that's as good as it can be, like really clean but still tastes amazing. And right. so there's always a little bit of compromise. Um, our clean bar is literally the cleanest bar on the market. The high protein, low sugar is, yeah, when you when you go low sugar, you're going to have to use uh, sugar substitutes like stevia, which is what we use. Right. And, and and I was against it, but then I said, well, damn, I have stevia in my coffee every morning. You know, I'm being a total hypocrite, like bit, way too rigid. So she's really good at, at sort of pushing. Pulls you a little bit towards, yeah, towards that end. You know why? You know why? Because she's not, because she's a chef and chefs are all about taste. Um, and giving the consumers what they want. And when you're a business guy, we're often a tiny bit rigid. So, um, it's so a good combination. A, a combination. So yeah. what was the first flavor, Jim? Peanut butter. How innovative, right? So there was peanut butter, but our, our tweak was a little bit different. We said, you know, a lot of peanut butter bars have peanut flavoring or whatever. We're like, not only does it have to have peanuts in it, let's grind it on peanut butter. So like the peanut mm, butter is like off the cool. charts good. Yeah. Let's go to the plant source it we put in almonds we put in uh, brown rice 
Um, dates has been our base. You know, dates are the healthiest form of sugar. Yeah. Um, and everywhere except for America, it's incredibly popular. You go to like South America and the Middle East and Europe, dates are a staple, especially in the Middle East, dates are a staple. Um, they just haven't caught on in America, although they're becoming kind of in vogue. But we've we've Americanized our own dates as we had bacon wrap dates. That's like the American American version of dates. <laughs> Super Bowl that version. Is, yeah, like deep fat fried dates. But um, the dates are a great base because they're easy to work with and they're so healthy. I mean, it's just the the vessel that you know it comes in is just loaded with vitamin A and vitamin D. It's just it's so healthy. Yeah. So how do you decide how often to release another flavor? So now you have four you have four flavors, right? We, we waited too long. So it, it took us three years to release a new flavor. Mm. We were prior, we were pretty slow on, on the R&D. But, but another thing that you know how you do when you're in startup mode is you're trying to do everything. So you me, the to. sales guy, yeah. is trying to do R&D, and I'm also paying the bills, and I'm also you know doing this and that. And as we got a little bit bigger, um, Nettie said, just sell, dude. Just you sell and just stay out of my kitchen, literally. <laughs> so uh, she's like, I will do the R and D. I, you know, because she's the one doing the demos. And Filippo, my brother-in-law, he's the one out at Whole Foods doing the demos, hearing every day, hey, well, how about mint chip? How about this? How about that? And so one thing we kept hearing was high protein, low sugar. Yeah. Uh, so we said, let's come out with four high protein, low sugar. Let's do really fun flavors and really interesting flavors. Right. So we came out with birthday cake flavor, coconut cream pie, uh, peanut butter, and uh, lemon vanilla swirl. Like interesting flavors. Um, another thing was uh, no peanuts. Uh, you know, you can't get into Costco and you can't demo in, in Costco and a lot of other big retailers if you have peanuts. Mm. You can't get into airlines. So much with for peanuts. the peanut butter bar, right? <laughs> so, 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 I know, so we said, okay, we're going to have a peanut butter bar because people love peanuts. Um, but. The other three, we're not going to have any peanuts. So we use cashew butter um, as our base. Um, and then we use a little stevia to bring the sugar down. So the sugar level is so low. You know, it's two grams of sugar. That's ridiculous. The protein level is 21 grams. That's really high. Um, the whole point of protein is for recovery when you work out. Um, it helps build your muscle or repair your muscle. But probably more importantly, as you and I and 99% of the world are not Olympic weightlifters, um, is uh, it fills you up. It fills you up. Yeah. So uh, I ate a protein bar yesterday. Uh, I was flying from you know Denver to Chicago. I had it at noon. I was full till six o'clock. So it's really it's a diet aid. So how many? F you have four flavors now, right, or more? We have four clean bar flavors. We oh. have four protein bar flavors, and then we have one nut free. So we've got nine flavors. Gotcha. So what's the most popular? You've only seen four though. You've only seen four. Yeah. Probably. So yeah. have you not released the other one? Because on your website, I only saw, how about them apples, no bluffin', banana muffin, peanut butter clutter, and super hip chocolate chip. That's what I saw. Yeah, I mean, literally, you're on the cutting edge here with your talk show. <laughs> like, we literally are releasing it okay. right the second. Oh, wow. Okay. So what's the most popular out of those four? For, uh, out of the f first four is peanut butter. Peanut butter, for sure. What, yeah, what's which, I've learned, which I've learned, by the way, is an American thing. Like, because uh, we're in Europe also. We're in a... a, a pockets in Europe and uh, they don't dig the peanut butter. What's the most um, popular in Europe? They like chocolate. Chocolate. You know, Belgium. Has, I would guess like chocolate. actually I would guess super hip chocolate chip would be the number one out of the four. It's, even number, in the US. Two, it, it's number two but it's very close and then we're in South America. We're in a few places in South America and it's banana and it's apple. They don't they don't dig the peanut butter, the chocolate, not so much. They they're healthier eaters than yeah. we America. Yeah. So it's it's very interesting as you go global, you know, you learn the taste. Yeah. And, and Jim, you're the the business guy. Talk about the thought about the packaging too, because there, I'm uh, sure there was a lot of thought that went into that. It was it, it, packaging is very different. So, you know, one thing you notice in consumer, you know, CPG consumer products. Um, it usually punches you in the face and you know, you look at the cereal and it's colorful and it's uh, Usually kind of gaudy and garish and it's often aimed at kids mm -hmm. um, And then you even in the natural space uh, There was two there was two different categories one of the you know in the bar space It was a lot of bars that you know the way the the marketing took they take themselves very seriously and it's almost too intimidating. Yeah, you could you definitely know? tell that the company has a good sense of humor with the names, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So we, we wanted to be like the Ben and Jerry's. You know, yeah, one yeah. of the reasons why Ben and Jerry's is, has lasted is a, it's fun. B, you feel like you you know their founders, a couple 
you know, happy stoners from Vermont and um, you, you feel like you know them. And very few companies really uh, yeah. integrate any personality at all. Yeah. I mean, they do it with kids because they use the cartoon characters, but for us adults, you usually don't integrate a sense of humor or any personality. If I pick up a cereal or I pick up pasta and I turn it around and I look and there's nothing about the founders, I, I typically don't buy it. Hmm. But if it's like Newman's own, you know, he started that for His charity. How can you? Right, yeah, yeah. How can you support that? I mean, and it's good stuff. Uh, but if you pick up, and you know the, what I'm talking about, you pick up like pasta, and, it, and it's a boring name, and there's nothing on the back, and they yeah. use bland language. Yeah, right. It's a bunch of suits in a boardroom who came up with it. So we wanted to be the opposite. You know, how about them apples came from the scene in uh, Good uh, Of course, Good, Good Will Hunting. Hunting. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, uh, no buff and banana muffin came after I, you know, had a little too much red wine. You know, it's like. All the names came from something <laughs> So why minis, right? Because it's tough enough to produce just the bar. Yeah. And what was the thought behind the mini? Was that really a difficult process also? Yeah, it's a great question, actually. Uh, and we're pushing the minis a lot now. Sure. Retailers haven't been uh, uh, as quick adopters on, on minis or bite-sized stuff as, as uh, I thought they would. Mm-hmm. And for the obvious reason, it's a smaller ring. You know, so they're buying a one dollar bar instead of a two dollar bar. But I think what a lot of retailers um, are catching on to are now are multi packs. So we've got an eight pack of minis um, that we're pushing heavily, and it's just starting to get some traction. It took a little while, but um, TJ Maxx um, took them on nationally, wow. and they're selling really That's well. I'm, it's it is amazing. So as the American appetite has changed, and as you probably know, this cereal has gone down uh, dramatically in sales, like Kellogg's and Post and all the I other didn't know that. companies. Okay, yeah. yeah because, uh, because America, I mean, you know, sitting down with a bowl of milk and cereal, that's going to take a good 10 minutes. There's definitely a just, movement, too, of away from the carbs. I mean... It's away from the carbs and, yeah. and milk, too. Milk is not as popular as it used to be. Um, Americans eat very fast. Um, and, um, and sitting down at cereal takes 15 minutes, which is way too long for Americans. We want it faster. Right. You know, but, you know, Filippo, our R&D guy, is from Naples, Italy. He's a chef from Naples. When Italians sit down to dinner, that's a four-hour process. It's like a six-hour, right, leave, exactly. Yeah, you're going to leave full, and you're going to leave very happy, and probably very happy if you eat, eat a drink as limoncello. We're the opposite. You know, for when sure. I went to Italy and stayed with his family, they were asking me in Italian through a translator, they're like, is it true that Americans eat in their cars? And I'm like, yeah, I guess, I, I guess it is. We do eat in your cars because we're on the go. Bars are a meal, you know, our bars are like a meal replacement. Right. My a peanut butter bar and Starbucks coffee is my breakfast every day. What made you decide to do the mini bars, though? Mini that's bar, a, I would think that's a tough decision because now it's more packaging. You have another skew to worry about. Um, yeah. Uh, kids, kids and moms. Kids and moms. Um, I noticed uh, my girlfriend, who's got a, a seven-year-old son, he can eat him. He could. He could almost eat a full-size bar, but not quite. Mm. Um, my sisters. I got three sisters. They can't quite eat a full-size bar. And then we thought, if someone buys this and can only eat three quarters or a half, it's too big. Uh, we should come up with a mini. So yeah. we thought it'd be great for a lunchbox. Great for travelers. Uh, more woman-focused. Ironically, even with a guy's name on. The, you know the name of the company right. we are a little more woman focused than male we're one of the few bars that's a little more woman focused yeah Hence I mean the, the packaging cover. is sort of like it's a lighter blue it's I don't know it's yeah. inviting that was, that was it's not purpose. like I'm a workout like maniac and I need it, to take this bar type of thing you know what the thing is it, it's there were plenty of uh, bars that satisfy the workout guy you know what I mean there's a lot of really good bars that are for the workout guy yeah. uh, I want you and me, uh, you know, your wife, my girlfriend, kids. I want to be smack dab in the middle of the market. Um, the majority of people that spend their life in the gym are small. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just want, it was literally the idea was for me traveling back and forth to Silicon Valley in New York. The packaging, to answer your question, the light blue color, yeah. A, is Chicago, uh, the Chicago flag. Um, so mm. I wanted to like be Chicago centric and B the idea of it, the minimalist look of it was taken from, I was in the shower. Uh, you ever had Kiehl's shampoo, like Kiehl's, mm-hmm. ever seen that brand Kiehl's? No. Your, your wife or girlfriend would know it. I'm sure. Um, hopefully not both. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> right. you know, Kiehl's is a brand that's been around a hundred years and, yeah. and it's, it's so minimalist that it's almost boring, but it's elegant in its, in its, um, lack of stuff. 
And in the natural foods category, right. everything's like Turbo, Max, and blah, blah. You know, it's sort of cheesy. Oh, for so sure. So let's yeah. come up with something that's really simple, almost elegant looking, and that's what we did. So what's it like? You grew up in a household. It was you and three sisters. Yeah, and, and I'm the youngest. What's that like? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, actually, it's good training to be a sales guy. You sort of have to fight your way you know, into the bathroom. You have to fight your way into the kitchen. You have to fight to get the car. Um, you know, uh, girls in general are more mature than we are, and especially at a younger age. So I was the buffoon trying to just get anything. It makes you a good salesman. So uh, I, my family was a little bit unusual uh, because all my sisters were athletes. So uh, all my sisters were actually better athletes than I was. So, um, you know, my sister... I wrestled in high school, and I remember up until my sophomore year, she could still kick my ass. <laughs> so it was a little different than growing up with girly girls, but um, it's great training to be a, a sales guy. Yeah. Um, what, you know, we were talking a little about the technology, your technology eye, because you were you know, obviously a technology guy, six startups. What, you know, we talked a little bit. Anything else about the distribution path that's unique to your eye that you came at it from a different angle? Yeah. So typically, you know, in food... Um, there, when you go into, uh, where do you shop for food? Uh, yeah. Costco a lot. Um, well, Costco's you know. innovative. Costco's mm-hmm. very different. So I, I'll give you the difference yeah. in why Costco's eating so many guys lunch out there. Costco doesn't go through distributors. Costco buys from the suppliers direct, but they buy in bulk yeah, yeah. and in return they ask for a really good price. And, and I haven't worked with Costco yet, but I want to, um, and from all accounts, everybody I've talked to, they're phenomenal folks to do, do business yeah. with. That's been their shtick. Their distribution models, we don't go to distributors, we go direct to the, to the source of the food. Um, most places, most of your regional grocery chains go through distributors. Distributors are very necessary when you get 100,000 different SKUs, a SKU meaning a, a product, individual product on right. your floor. You, can you imagine if uh, Whole Foods or Sunsets or somebody is trying to buy you know, Jimmy bars, and they're trying to buy from the toothpick company. They're trying to buy from the beef company. It would be ridiculous. So they go yeah. through distributors, and so I would sell to a distributor. The distributor sells to Sunsets. Right. You still go to Sunsets to get the yes from them. Like, yep, we like Jimmy bars. We'll do it. Um, but ultimately, it they uh, work through, it is the done through a distributor. Yeah, yeah. Now, at another at another um, uh, process, and that's brokers. So there's it's typically a food broker who I, as the guy who owns the company, will hire the food broker to go pitch the buyer at Sunsets and then go through a distributor to get to your floor so you can buy a Jimmy Bar. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of different processes. From what, what we did and what Amazon's doing um, is, hey, let's, yeah, let's definitely go through distributors because I can't ship everywhere in the world. I need distributors. But anytime we can, let's try to go direct. Yeah. Direct to consumer on our website is awesome. Because literally, it'll be 2 o'clock in the morning on a, on a Tuesday night, and I'm, if I'm still working or something, if I get an email from someone that says, hey, I just had your bar, I've got a question, I'm going to respond. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I can't do that with most grocery chains. Um, mm. you know, if we can go direct to retailers, we go direct to retailers. Yeah. I think I get emails from you at the most random times, too. Like, they actually are coming in at 2.30 in the morning, then I respond. I'm like, okay, he's up, too. <laughs> no, it's just a guy who's got no life. <laughs> That clearly has nothing going on. You know, Jim, talk a little bit. I mean, you've had several acquisitions um, in the past two. What have you learned from that that when a, a big company comes and gives you a sweet deal to purchase Jimmy Bars, what will you know because you've gone through these acquisitions? I, I know a lot because they made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> you know? yeah, experiences get when you experiences is what you get when you when you made a mistake. Um, first company I started was a paper company in San Francisco when I was 25 and, mm. and I was acquired, uh, I company got acquired when I was 27, I think. Um, I sold it. I shouldn't have sold it. It was, uh, you know, why not? Uh, because I had a profitable company. I'm a kid. I'm tw- in 27. I've got a profitable company. I have zero debt. Um, I had a couple sales reps. We were cranking. We were doing really well. And, mm. and I got a pretty good, not a great offer. Clearly I still have to work. So it wasn't retirement money. Um, maybe you want to work. Good, I don't know. Well, yeah. I, I got a pretty good offer and I took it because, um, you know, uh, it just sounded sexy um, and the money was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I should have sold it. You know, I, I wish I had I wish I had me now telling me like, hey, man, you've got a company with no debt. You're increasing sales 50 percent a year. Why are you selling? Unless it's 
retirement money, why in the world would you sell? So that was, you know, going through the acquisition, I've learned the hard way on that one. Uh, a couple of acquisitions I've, I've been through where I wasn't the majority partner, I uh, probably would have negotiated a better deal for myself. But um, I think the acquisition process, if we're acquired at some point in time, going through a couple of them, uh, positive and negative, um, I've learned that, and actually Mark Cuban has this in his 10 rules that I read, never build a company to be acquired. You know, we're not building bu- building this to to be acquired. Yeah. It probably may happen at some point if we're an interesting enough brand for a larger company. Yeah. Um, but um, we're not building it to sell it. We're building a brand to be profitable and to yeah. give consumers a great product. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, Jim, I want to talk about the your favorite story of getting into an actual, I don't know if it's a grocery store chain or a store. What's your favorite story? of you pounding the pavement and getting into one of these these places? Because you have a really impressive list of, you know, a few of the places, like American Airlines, Kroger, Macy's, Harvard, Whole Foods. I mean, there's a lot that you guys got into, and I know every one of those is pounding the pavement. So I'm wondering which one's your favorite story. Uh, You know, our approach has always been to barge our way in. Um, right. and, you know, and, and sort of, uh, let, just literally barge our way in. Uh, I was going into, um, who was it? Was it, it was Google or Facebook? I think it was Facebook. Like, uh, it just, they just didn't want to see me. They're like, go away, dude. Just go, go, go. You and just I showed finally, up, you showed up at the, like the head office I, or something? I showed up at the head office with samples, uh, with the gal's name on it and she finally tasted it and she gave it positive reviews and we, we got into Facebook, but I literally got a no 25 times like she just went didn't and then you just showed up me. with the bar. And I just showed up in a sample I mean little in San Francisco I just said you know F it I'm getting on a plane I'm just gonna drop off samples in person wow. so that's what we did and it, and, it, and it worked and that's kind of this business different from technology you know uh, technology is the cool thing great thing about the tech business is it doesn't matter what color skin you're is it doesn't matter where you're from it literally doesn't matter your age it doesn't really matter your education Yes, you can be. You go to Harvard, like uh, although Gates dropped out of Harvard, and so did uh, Zuckerberg. But you know, yes, you're gonna have to be really smart. But the best thing about a technology business, is smartest, smartest guy or girl wins. Um, it doesn't matter how connected your family is. This business is a little bit different. This is more of a pound the pavement, bang out calls, go see people, not be a dumbass and waste money. Um, it's a little simpler, uh, but a little more time consuming. Yeah. So sometimes I kind of miss. You know, uh, uh, technology, which is go strike a monster deal and nurture it, and and hopefully your widget or whatever is really great. Um, on the other side of the coin, it is kind of fun selling something that's tangible. Yeah, for sure. You know, as you're, we used to joke, uh, you know, uh, like a few jobs ago, I used to get on the elevator. I was living in New York. I, I was uh, doing arbitrage of banner ads, which is crazy thing to think about. Like banner ads are bought and sold like stocks. Right. Um, and I'd get on an elevator. I'm like, what did I do to it? Like, how did I contribute to the world? I like, I bought banners for like 50 cents and sold for a buck. Like, I don't know what I just did. You know, <laughs> and you sort of leave a little empty. This is your, you know, you're making a, a product that's really healthy. And when yeah. you get on the back of our bar, it says, uh, uh, send us a selfie with the Jimmy bar, you know, on, on our Facebook page. And we get, we get selfies from people from all over the world that talk about, oh, you know, my kid has celiac disease, and mm. this is the only thing he can stomach. Yeah. And thank you so much. I mean, that makes you feel good. Yeah. What's your favorite success story from a customer's point of view that you've gotten? A letter? We've gotten gushing emails and letters. Yeah. One that's kind of funny is um, we sell a little bit in Australia, and um, uh, this gal, uh, her son has celiac disease, and uh, every Saturday for you know several months, she would send me a picture of her son at karate practice in Melbourne you know, halfway across the world with his Jimmy bar, you know, just saying this has just changed his life. Wow, and that's he, amazing. he literally, he literally couldn't eat anything else. And, uh, it makes you feel nice and fuzzy, but we've gotten a lot from people. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, kids especially that have, uh, an allergy, allergy intolerance. Yeah. And, um, and also with a lot of the food that we eat, in the center aisle of the store, which is where the junk is, mm-hmm. um, you notice you eat a bag of chips or something, you're falling asleep. And um, a lot of people say, we, I ate a Jimmy bar and I was, you know, I felt energized, yeah. I felt great. It's just nice. What's the most common thing that you hear? Like, is it people with celiac disease? What, uh, what are, 
Yeah, clean, people take clean. Our, our, yeah. our thing is clean. Uh, yeah. I, you know, we do. You know, we like to integrate a little sense of humor in in, in our brand. And uh, at one point in time, I I grabbed uh, my uh, little niece, the one who named the company, and two of her little friends were adorable. And uh, my intern shot with this really high tech, you know, uh, video camera, aka a cell phone, and. Uh, <laughs> And I handed her um, a bar, like one of the national brands. I don't want to name them because I don't want to get sued. But I handed him a bar. I said, "Read, read the ingredients." And and that's she's a great like, video. Where can you see? Is that on your? Go to, go, on to, your go, to, go, go to our Facebook page and click video. I'm gonna watch but, that. Like she's yeah. like she's like mono inkle blah. She couldn't read it, and she's a smart kid. And her friend nudged her and goes, "Clearly, your mom doesn't love you." And uh, it was just it was hysterical, and we didn't wow. really even tell him what to say. And so we filmed. And I said. Okay, now we're at a Jimmy bar. And she's like, almonds, dates, walnuts. She could read every ingredient because it's actually food. Yeah. And so we did that, and uh, we got a huge response. It went viral a little bit. It was funny. Yeah, I think, Jim, I read that you have several allergies that you found out years later, too. Yeah, you know what? Uh, traveling back and forth to the coast, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I was, like, falling asleep halfway. You know, I was always, like, getting tired, which yeah. is a horrible feeling. I went to a food allergist, and... Uh, they do the blood allergy test, and I was allergic to gluten, eggs, and dairy, like off the charts, which kind of screws you out of breakfast. I mean, there's not much you can have for breakfast. Decades later, you fi- finally figure that out. Yeah, right? yeah, it's nice to learn at 44. No wonder I've been nauseous my whole life. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm like, okay, I got to change my diet, and that was right around when I was uh, messing yeah. around with bars. Yeah, Jim, you're a tech guy. What kind of software tools do you use to run the company? Uh, QuickBooks uh, we use um, for accounting. Shopify is our e-commerce platform. Yeah, love Shopify. Um, yeah, Shopify is great. And then we use um, WordPress is our overlay uh, for the website on top of Shopify. How do you keep track of all the inventory? <laughs> a nice question. We're actually we're we're shopping for inventory uh, systems right now. I was using. Uh, I was using a different inventory software before that we weren't thrilled with, okay. um, but our uh, our manufacturing plant keeps track of all that. Yeah. Have you heard of Scubana before? And yeah. maybe one. Yeah. Scubana. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll yeah. send you a link. You can check it out. Yeah, please do. Um, yeah, because we're actively looking. Yeah. Last question. Thank you so much, Jim. This has been awesome. Um, I can go on and on with you. I know you're busy. Um, where should we point people towards? I have one last question for you. We should go to JimmyBars.com. Any other? Sites we should send people to? JimmyBars.com, go to our Facebook page, um, which is obviously on Facebook. Uh, or if you've got a great question, just email me. Um, again, I, I have no life, so I'll probably answer it at 2 in the morning. <laughs> and then when do the flavors come out? Like when are they, the new ones are releasing? Well, you're going to get free samples here this week. Amen. Um, yeah, but um, we're, we're just going out to the Whole Foods of the world and the Sunsets and the Treasure Islands and all our local. We'll start with our local partners. We just opened an office in Toronto, um, so Toronto is going to get it real quick. And then um, uh, probably within 30 days, you'll see them. Yeah. So I always ask, Jim, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been the lowest moment and how you push through and then what's been the proudest so far? <laughs> well, I'll tell you the lowest moment. Um, <laughs> I left, I left, uh, you know, I left a perfectly good six figure job. You know, we, we, we had not been acquired yet. Um, we we're in the process of being acquired or, or chitty chatting. And, uh, I decided, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave. Like we're, I knew we were going to get acquired at some point, but I, I left right before the acquisition because I was, you know, actually trying to do a different tech startup. So there was at one point in time, as you go from making a nice living to zero, I'm like, oh, well, I think I made a mistake. Not only zero, but you probably are paying. <laughs> oh yeah, money you, have for the... in, you have to put it. You have to put it. Right. There's one point where I literally I remember brushing my teeth in the morning, thinking I'm an idiot. Like I had a really good situation. <laughs> That's not a, a good a self-motivating gr- talk in the morning. Oh yeah, with a great company where you know I was left alone to do deals, and I, I left the company. I knew that we were going to get acquired yeah. eventually, but. You know, leave, leaving when I did, I, I left some money on the table. So mm-hmm. I thought, you're really a, a true dumbass. Uh, the positives are... Something was actually, pulling you to do that, though, right? I mean, you... You know, you know what? I think as an entrepreneur, and especially, and especially if you're someone who started several companies, you know, it's not the first time I've left a perfectly good job. You know, I remember what... Uh, what the hell was it? It was a movie I saw once. 
uh, with Clint Eastwood, who played a, a an old crusty marine, and uh, he, like he, all of them. Yeah. yeah, I know, I forget what it was, but it was they were just about to parachute, and the and the soldier, young soldier, was uh, was nervous, and he said, "Son, you know, jumping out of a perfectly good airplane is not a natural thing. Just do it." And it, I think you know, leaving perfectly good jobs to start your own, it's not a natural thing. Right. But I think, but the the fun that you have, you know, if you're that kind of guy or gal that wants to do your own thing, you know, it's, I have figured out on paper, it's worth 10 X the money. So if I'm paying myself, I'm just going to make this up 20 grand a year. Um, I would rather work for 20 grand a year working for myself than 200 grand working for a company. Yeah. Even if the company's great, because it's that it's being, you feel claustrophobic working, not working for yourself. Um, and it's almost, it's almost castrating yeah. in a way. I, yeah. I can't explain it. It's your personality. Yeah, I mean, you're used to that too by this point. You yeah, know? you're used to it. You know, and again, having some some startups that have done well, having some startups that tanked. You know, uh, some acquisitions I shouldn't have done. Some acquisitions that I probably should have done. You know, yeah. you, you make a lot of mistakes along the yeah. way. So proudest. What's been the proudest so far? Proudest with Jimmy thing, yeah. I think right now. I mean, we're we're in a good, really good place right now. We're we're going in the GNC nationally. That's a very very big it's deal. Amazing. That's thirty five hundred stores, yeah. um, and we're building out the team. We'll probably have about fifteen people working for the company by the end of the, the year, um, and it's becoming real. You know, your first your first year in business is just like okay, you're getting over the like the postmortem of like oh my god, I'm I'm really dumb. I left a good job. What do I do now? Yeah, your second year is like you're building the product and you're thinking, do I have anything here? Or am I just regurgitating spinning what everybody wheels. else is? Yeah. Spinning your wheels, and then year three you sort of get it. And it it's been the same thing with the other companies I've started. It takes a couple of years yeah. till you figure it out. And and the food industry is not um, sophisticated, but it is the guy who works the gal who works the hardest will win. I mean, it it is a pound. It's three years yards in a cloud of dust. You just have to do it. Yeah. Um, and that's and we feel like right now we're we're in a good place. Yeah. Jim, thank you so much. Everyone should check out jimmybars.com. Fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate it. Chicago PD, Chicago Med, uh, Empire. Why you know, why uh, Simon Casting? How'd that work out? Well, hence the last name. Um, it's my sister Claire. I <laughs> gotcha. So she she uh, she she's a you know she's a big deal. So she's a big casting she's in a Chicago. Big deal. And yeah, she she uh, has a huge studio space that she uh, leases out to us for. Uh, you'll appreciate this as a startup guy for uh, five hundred bucks a month. Plus, I had to give her some equity. So I pulled an old technology trick and I, I gave her equity for a break on the lease. That's a good deal, I think. Um, so because I saw it, several family members, right? Yeah, so, so my sister Annette is my partner. Right. Um, her husband Filippo does our R and D. Um, we've got uh, our street team consists of um, nieces, nephews, nephews, uh, girlfriends, nieces. Have girlfriends. them pound the pavement. Yeah, have them pound yeah. that pavement in Chicago. That's why I see you all over. Like, there's a small shop in the suburbs that, and I, you know, you're everywhere. At least where here. are you based out of? Are you um, here in Chicago? I'm in Chicago. Um, but I'm in Highland Park, and there's like a small like, convenience store, one of my favorite places, and they have Jimmy Bars all over the place there. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're from Chicago. I yeah, mean, we're no, I know Deerfield. that. We're from Deerfield. Oh, so. you are? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, okay. the Highland Park. Yeah, like Bob's the Highland Pantry? Park sunsets and... Bob's Pantry, ring a bell? Yes, it does. Okay. I'm one of my favorite places. <laughs> yeah, that's funny.